So I took a break from studying Japanese for about two weeks to focus on my school finals. And now that all those finals are over, I'm jumping back into the swing of things for studying Japanese. And I'm coming across kanji once again and realize and was thinking to myself, like, kanji is very hard. I keep messing up kanji, I keep forgetting kanji. And so, why am I even learning it? And so, today's video, I kind of want to talk about why I started learning kanji from the beginning and why I'm going to try to continue to learn kanji throughout my entire Japanese language learning journey. And so, I've got a couple of points.、Um, what I'm going to start with is why I started learning kanji from the beginning. And so, One of my main reasons for starting from the very beginning is because I want to become fluent in the language and not just being able to speak it, I would love to be able to consume the native content. And so, in order to, in order to consume native level content, I need to have some familiarity or a, a strong hold of kanji. And that's, there's, I don't think there's any way of getting around it. Of course, you could do、uh, the romanization of everything or hiragana, but.、Um, That, re, those resources aren't always going to be there to help you and so, or help me. And so that's why I'm spending a lot of time trying to learn the kanji. And although it sounds very counterintuitive,、um, people say it makes it easier to learn Japanese. And I completely agree with that.、Um, the main reason is a lot of times I'll come across kanji that I may not completely know, but if I. If I see the, the hiragana reading and then the kanji together, I can understand it. And sometimes it allows me to read words without even knowing what the hiragana reading of it means and understand what the meaning of it is. And so that is how I can make it a little bit easier for learning Japanese. And those are my main reasons why I started learning from the beginning.、Um, that main, main one being because I want to become fluent and be able to consume native level content. And so. With that out of the way, I think、um, the next, one, next point I want to go into is a little bit of my struggles trying to learn it.、Um, it's, not all, it's not all easy. It's not the easiest thing to go about learning kanji. It's very, very time consuming. And so I don't think, I personally don't think that it's hard to learn kanji. Rather, it's very time consuming. And very、uh, mentally draining to learn the kanji. So, I guess, I mean, depends on your definition of how hard it is or hard.、Um, but it's just very time consuming. I know I have to spend a lot of time in order to learn it. Another thing is that oftentimes I'll dedicate some time to learning kanji and I'll come across kanji and, and I know that I've studied it, but I've forgotten what it means. And so, at times, that can be very frustrating. And,、um, It always brings back the question, like, dang it, why am I learning this stuff? But with that being said, I'll come across another one and be like, oh, okay, I know what this means because of the kanji. And so that evens it out. And, but another thing is that it seems kind of like an endless journey. And every time I learn a new kanji, there's another kanji to learn. And when I say kanji, I'm talking about kanji combinations. One of the Uh, difficulties is that there are so many different com combinations for kanji out there, and it's just、um, sometimes when I come across it, I'm like, are these new combinations or are these two kanji, two, two kanji words like put together?、Um, and so it can be very confusing, or it can look confusing when I'm trying to read, but if I, if I really look at it, then Sometimes the kanjis come, the kanji readings and words come to my head, and I'm able to read. And so, I guess the next point that I want to go about is how I deal with it. How do I deal with the kanji? And so, one of the biggest things that I've been using or use continually is Anki. And so, I'll always go back to Anki and try to, I guess it's just grind out some vocabulary. And I don't know if that's the best way about going about it. I'm starting to have some doubts. That maybe instead of brute forcing my way through the, <laughs> the kanji, I should come up with a more tactical approach to remembering the kanji, and maybe that'll have more impact on my, stud on my studies in a more time efficient manner.、Um, but I'm gonna continue looking around or continue doing the way that I'm doing right now. 
I had originally tried the language, um, the Fluent Forever method with the whole mnemonics and images, and that stuff actually worked very well, but it was very time consuming. And so maybe I'll have to go back to that in a smaller scale and not spend, because it would take me about a minute or more to make like a complete mnemonic and everything like that. Um, and so after, well, one thing that I use is that Anki. And the, the next thing that I use are assisted readers. And so um, what I personally use is Link. It's a assisted reading um, resource online. It does cost money, so you do have to pay for it. But I find the interface is um, it's well enough. It works well enough, and the you can import your own files into it and your own articles, subtitles, whatnot, and read from there. And it has um, you can highlight the words, you can highlight phrases, it can tell you what the meaning of it is, and you don't have to dwell over it too much. And so that's my way of reading without um, spending too much time on trying to worry about the kanji. And lastly, last but not least, um, how I deal with kanji is sometimes I don't I don't deal with it. And so what that means is if I forget a kanji, I try not to worry about it too much because if I understand what that kanji's hiragana reading is, I'll tend to move along and my personal thought is that I'll eventually come to associate that kanji with it as long as I keep coming across the word or using the word or reading that word. And so those are my main three ways of how I deal with it. I use Anki assisted readers and just don't deal, deal with them. And that pretty much sums up my thoughts so far on learning kanji from the beginning on how, and, how I, and how I deal with it. Um, just wanted to kind of get a video out there because I haven't created a video in about a week but that was because I was taking a little bit of a break because of finals and whatnot so I'm jumping back into the swing of things and getting my Japanese learning back on the road and so I hope to come out with some some more videos I don't know exactly what they're gonna be about but they'll come along and so as always good luck with your studies out there everybody I will see you in another video and see you later.